All right. We're back. We are live. This is Demos in the Dark live. I am Ryan. My name's Kai. And uh, we are glad that you are here. This is our last one of the year. It is. What are uh, we going to do with our lives? I don't know. Uh, you know, I feel like we... We... Uh, this was just kind of an idea, this live thing, and we were going to do it for, you know, a few times and see how it turned out. And if you look at how we're ending, like, well, first off, like, all of the guests that we've had on just the short amount of time that we've been doing this are have been way above our pay grade. Absolutely. Um, Chris Benson's goat. Chris Benson's other goat. Chris <laughs> Benson's children. Chris Benson's third goat. Yeah. It's been amazing. We did have a mm -hmm. lot, somehow, a lot of goats. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I think uh, you know the the way we're closing out this year uh, it is unbelievable. Uh, you know, we had Rich Fortis from Guns N' Roses uh, last week, and now we have uh, David Torn uh, tonight. And David is uh, one of the oh gosh in like the fusion jazz world, and in the pop world, and in the film scoring world and all of it he's uh he's a legend and uh we don't deserve for him to be here but he is so uh we'll get going on that right Uh, we already have a comment. They said I was told this was going to be in 1080p. I'm naturally blurry and self-conscious <laughs> about it. You could not. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think without <laughs> any further ado, uh, we should bring on uh, Mr. Uh, David Torn. There he is. Hello, sir. How are you? We're calming them down. Sorry. Uh uh, I'm uh, I, I'm as weird as I am usually. <laughs> uh, that's life, uh... life is tense. I'm working all the time, and uh, and and I'm old, so I have a body that breaks down a lot. But I am I'm actually good. Yeah. What are you? Are you? Teeth. Look at those teeth. They're you beautiful. Got, you, you got nicer he's got teeth. Got movie star teeth. Yeah. yeah. He's got nicer teeth. Than that. Um. What are you working on stuff now that you can talk to us about? What keeps you busy right now? Oh, so many things are crazy on. I am. I just finished a remix of a band. I think it's partially the band Sonar, but it includes. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the the Norwegian guitarist Ivan Arset. He's a yeah. incredible, incredible guitar player. Really unique. Um, and he's in this band and I'm doing a remix of the, of the I did a remix, delivered a remix last night of, uh, of this band, which is uh, synthesizers, uh, very interesting rhythms, drums, and a lot of Ivan Arset tracks. So I did a remix. There are two remixes being done. One is me and one is Brian Eno. And um, oh, that guy. so I delivered it last night. I, I delivered it last night. Haven't heard a word, which is scary, but I expected somebody to have a shocked reaction. So maybe that's what happened. I, I kind of, well, I, I, I basically, I kicked ass. I really, <laughs> I, I really punched the, I punched the, the, the arrangement was so dense of the tune that, and I certainly didn't want to play any more guitar on it because the Stefan Talen, the, the main guitar player, and I've been playing all these tracks. There's a synthesizer. There's a, it's very complex rhythmically. The music is rhythmically complex. And I just thought, well, man, I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna do this from the remixer point of view. So I inserted, the drums are very steady. It's a real steady rhythm throughout. So I fucked around with the arrangement and uh, I actually brought in a, a drummer from friend from Minneapolis, 
um, gave me uh, a sample, JT Bates. Oh, Whoa. yeah. We love JT. We love JT. Can you not love JT? Plus, I... he grooves like a motherfucker. He's, he's mean, disgusting. Like, I'm, I'm, playing, business. I'm playing with him on Thursday, actually. It's, uh, it's uh, I Will Say Hello For You. It's his Tom Please. Petty band and my Shania Twain band joining forces. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know that I used this sample yet. When I asked him if he could lend it to me, he, I originally thought that I was going to write something new to it. And then the remix came in and I went, well, this is perfect if I mess around with it a little bit. So, so well, I did, if, doing if that. you'd like me to break the news to him, I can do that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll save the sit down. For yeah, 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 yeah. Was, uh, was, like was JT the one that brought you to Ice House? Uh, JT helped us when we were there, but um, Son of Goldfinger, I I have like old musical connections in Minneapolis. Okay. I used to play at Walker, like pretty often sure. okay. at the Walker Art Center. Yeah, back yeah. in my arty days. Yeah, um, yeah. I and just and uh, I don't know. I have a lot of friends there, and yeah. and uh, Tim Byrne has a lot of friends there. So does yeah. Jess, and we. Tim and I are in a band with Dave King from the Bad Plus. Yeah, so yeah, we, we played we love Dave. with Dave. Cool. Love uh, the owner at Ice House and 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 again sandwiches. I mean, when you're traveling from anywhere to Minneapolis and you land there for lunch, it's like it's like being at home. Yeah. Plus, Taborn's uh, mom is Craig Taborn's par- uh, mom still lives in Minneapolis, mm-hmm. so she comes out to the gigs. Uh, oh, I love my it. friend Steve Tibbet. Still is in Minneapolis yeah. sometimes. Um, I, I yeah, Minneapolis is a it's a thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, you well, it, it, you know it. it, it, it it's a, it's a, it's a great destination on a tour for for me and a lot of my friends actually. Yeah, it's always yeah, been I, like that. I feel like uh, you know, like the combination of um, what First Ave has kind of done with, you know, they've taken over a bunch of different venues and they've really, uh, First Avenue's um, biggest priority seems to be being very hospitable to national acts that we would like to have come through here. Um, but yeah. then, um, but then the folks at Ice House, uh, so we lost, we lost a jazz club. We had a great jazz club in St. Paul and we lost that. And after, you know, there's like the Dakota downtown, but that's like, you know, like, you know, uh, what's his, what's his face? Piano guy, uh, Harry, that's like a Harry Connick Jr. Kind of like mm. white, white glove jazz, uh, club. Um, and then, um, and then Ice House popped up and they kind of filled in the, they filled in the gap there where you, they pulled in a lot of really cool instrumental artists, a lot of really cool jazz artists, a lot of really cool like folk. And yeah. And some, and some, and some. Some theater things too. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, or yeah. At least used for the pandemic. Yeah, it's it's a cool it's a cool vibe. It's it it really reminds me of some of the things that we have in in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, yeah. where they're kind of like multi format things, but there's a vibe about the place that they that they serve food and it's really really good and people go there to listen to music. It's it makes it kind of unusual. I think the last time. I was in. I played uh, solo. wasn't the last time, but it, no, that was that was in two, it was in 2015. I played a solo show at the at the kind of old hippie folky place in St. Paul. Um, do you know it's Turf it, Club? It's it kind of city. What's it called? Turf Club. No, it's like a big, biggish room that's that's too wide, high <laughs> stage. It seems like it's in a kind of either. I think it might be in an Ethiopian community. Um, there's, it's like a community center. Oh, I can't the remember cedar. the name of the place. Oh, the, oh cedar. the cedar. Yeah, that's still Minneapolis. Yeah, cedar. Yeah. Yeah, it, that place is great. Little, it cool is fun. To, it, it was fun to play because great audience, but the vibe wasn't like. It wasn't. It was. It was just like a lot of guitar players. Yeah. The green room is the, the best green part room, of that. The green room at, yeah. at the Cedar. That's though, the best part is, of that place. I mean, with the record player up there and the then just, laundry oh, machine. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, no, I, last thing about the ice house. Next time you're in town, uh, there's a fantastic. If you 
you know, you go to Ice House for lunch, you want some dinner, there's a great uh, Jamaican place right next door called Pimento that you got to try out. It's so good. Yeah, I think I did eat there once. I'm pretty sure I did. Man, um, all right. Good. Man. That's all. I'm just... <laughs> If you've already been there, that makes me even happier. David Tone, uh, before we get into uh, anything, I I just have a question that if I don't remember to ask it, it's gonna like I'm gonna it's gonna ruin my day. Okay. All right. Will you tell us? Will you tell us about your guitar? Because that yeah. that guitar is wild looking, and I just need the to pink, the pink one. The pink one. I want to know about your pink guitar. I, oh, I, I'm not set up to like visualize, but I'll try. Okay. <laughs> you mean you're blind? Yeah, I, ju I, well, I just went blind. Yep. Sorry. So did we. <laughs> so we're not. We won't be able to see it. No, I thought. I thought you wanted me to project an image with my mind. But <laughs> let's um, green screen that's the guitar. This guitar. Yes. Tell me about this guitar, because I have been... Uh... Okay. Ryan's a recent convert to pink guitars. <laughs> well, yeah, I just it's seemingly in oh, one week. Oh, I, I picked that up. It's, it's your bunting that's pink, right? I got a bunting, and, a, and I also got a Walsh guitar that was pink. Mm -hmm. They talked to oh, me... Oh, that's, the one, that, that's yeah. the one that killed me, is the Walsh one. The color of that one was just that kind of palish yeah. pink. This is... This color was a was not. This is not the color it was supposed to be. Okay. Did this you ha was supposed to be. It was supposed to be um, a more orange in it. So it was uh, like it's it's that old Fender color called Tahitian coral. Yeah. All right. And and it just it kind of went. The guy who was doing the finish, I don't know something something went funny and it didn't it didn't happen and. I was kind of bummed out when they brought the guitar out to me, and I sat down in front of this amp and plugged it in. The main thing about this guitar was the pickups, and because they were, this is the first of their kind. Yeah, what are and those? And made They they are foil buckers. Okay. This was made in uh, uh, two thousand. I don't know, eight not eight nine years ago, something like okay. like that. Um, I I wanted. The, the guys had old 1967 DeArmond gold foils in yeah. the shop, like lots of them. Yeah. Old, new old stock. And they sound incredible. I mean, inside of a redwood body, which is what Izzy and John were working with, old redwood, hmm. it sounded like, I couldn't believe how great it sounded. But I'm sitting in front of, and you can't see this, but I am surrounded by screens. I've got a gigantic film screen there, two monitors here. There's another, there are two computers that you can't see. And if I'm playing and writing and recording at the same time, I can't go with a, a guitar that's only a single coil. It just, it's a mess sure, and sure. you end up, it, it, there's, there's so much digital around here that, and I use so much fuzz, which yes, increases the <laughs> yes, noise of gain. Um, <laughs> it, is is that I, I just said to a man? I, I, he said, "What what pickups do you want?" We picked out the woods. We picked out what we were doing. We didn't have this backwards thing together yet, but we had the. They knew they were going to build a tornipulator for the first time they ever did it, and um, that was all done. And he goes, "So so which pickups though?" And I said, "I really want." The DeArmonds, but they it, can you do something? Can you like put them together, put do put them in series so they become like a single humbucker or something like that? And Izzy looked at me and he goes, "Hold on a second, this is Izzy Lugo from Ronin." Okay. Um, yeah. A truly huge-hearted, weird genius freak of a dude, <laughs> and he. he and he looks at me and he goes, hold, hold on, hold on a second. I said, what? He goes, I can make those pickups for you. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I, I, you're going to buy them? But, but, but no, 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 I can design them and, and put it together. I, I know I can do this. And I said, I didn't know you made pickups. And he goes, yeah, I never have before. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> Great. And I said, so how do, you know, 
how do you know you're going to be able to do this? And he goes, well, besides all the guitars that I've taken care of since I was 17 years old, he's, he runs the, he, he was the, um, uh, managed the, the, the lockers for all these rock bands who have their lockers in New York and outside New York and New Jersey. So Steely Dan, the Rolling Stones, mm. Izzy is the guy who was taking care of their guitars. He goes, yeah. besides that shit, um, you know, the guy, your friend, Matt Wells, who I got all these original gold foils from, Matt can do anything. He's like uh, the New York amp and electronics genius. And and he said, he'll help me if I have a problem. And I said, you're sure about this, man? And he goes, absolutely. And so when I got the guitar and they sent a picture of the pickups and I looked at them and I thought, well, that is fucked up. I like the way they look. <laughs> And I sat down to play the guitar and saw that it was this pink color. And John, uh, I think, didn't realize that he got the width of the nut wrong. It's super <laughs> narrow, mm. really narrow, un like old, the old Fender. They only did it for a couple of years narrow. It's like, it's like a knuckle. Yeah, like a <laughs> Mose right neck. Dude, it's like tiny. It's really small wow. thing. I picked it up and I went, oh shit, oh god, they made this for me, and shit, oh, what's it going to be like? Plugged it in, played like two or three notes. Number one, it played like exactly like you think it should, whatever that is. That's All how right. it was for me. And the sound from the pickups, immediately I went, holy shit, this is better than the Armands that I wanted. This mm -hmm. is it. And I put it into the humbucking mode and I split the coils. And that's pretty much the story of the guitar. I mean, I did change the bridge recent, recently because um, I really wanted to try this Vega trim. Thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Spanish bridge. And I'm, yeah. um, I'm pretty smitten with it so far. Do you, do you do a lot of that work yourself or do you have somebody that does it for you? You know, I can I can do stuff like truss rod and little bits of setup. But when something's like a, a new kind of trim, I just brought it to Izzy because he moved he moved about forty five minutes south of me, so I can okay. just drive there and bring it in. And so he did that work. He he set it up and he he really wanted to approve of it as well. Yeah. And now he's using the he bought a whole bunch of them. Nice. So, cool. Cool. Would you? So would he's you... got a new company called Fium. Oh. And and uh, it is made from the ashes of Ronin. So yeah, I, I feel have like a I've new seen one. That. Yeah. Cool. I have a I'll new have one coming. Um, cool. It's it, it's a lot like this one except the woods are a little bit different and the pickups are brand spanking new. Some new shit that is just nice. crazy. Now you're and different. You are kind of. I gathered it was it was interesting. I gathered uh, from one of my a, one of my annual trips to the gear page, uh, and there was something on there about um, foil pickups, and I chimed in with something, and um, like everybody was kind of like, <laughs> David, <laughs> like what does David Torn have to say about this? And like uh, oh, everybody, no, I, I'm pretty much an outsider, except for I have friends in the fuzz section. Yeah. But other, other people look at me like, uh, and, and sometimes lately I realize that I'm old and I'm bitchy and I get bitchy what? up in there. I really, uh, I think like, you're in what fine the, company. That's then. what the gear page is for. It's for what yelling at you, strangers. You, Old man yells at I don't want yeah. to do it, but don't don't buy another overdrive pedal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to make you happy. Stop. <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. Um, I guess you're done with overdrive demos. <laughs> yeah, never again. Nope. No, um, no, no, no. I, I don't. I, I'm not like that. I just mean like when you see the cats who are they're not playing as much as they're talking and buying. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the people who I want to help them if they want to live their life with a guitar in their hands. Yeah. So that's where I get my, my little, you know, bitchy kind of, 
I don't know. I, I some, sometimes I think it's really funny after I've written something. Yeah. <laughs> and other times I think, man, what a condescending jerk. <laughs> it's just like That's really the only vibe I've gotten from you so far <laughs> yeah, today. It's, it's, yeah. I yeah. know. Mean it's, mean it's, guy. It's, it's rough. It's, I got to look down on you guys for a while. Thank you. That's better. <laughs> Now, uh, I, I'm somewhat uh, new to your gear, certainly not to your playing. Can you explain the tornipulator to yes, me? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty easy. It, it is, um, it was, it, it's, it's easier if you know what, it was, what I originally called it. Originally, it was called the interrupt you later. Okay. So the idea is, and it came from in the 90s, oh man. Man, Minneapolis comes up in this picture a little in yes. this story a little bit. Go but uh, at about First Avenue. Me. <laughs> um it it the the three buttons are momentary switches and they're very fast. You can hit them with the tap them with your finger. Each one of them does something different, but they all interrupt whatever the pickups are putting out stops. You just don't hear that anymore. The first button engages this special shaker microphone who maintains the shape of its capsule inside the guitar because they feed back really, really well. Oh, cool. And it's fun to sing into sometimes. Yeah, I bet. Or pick up a saxophone from mm. across the stage if the drummer isn't playing too loud. Nice. And, and let the sax come through the amplifier or the or the singer or whatever. Sometimes I can put it up against the monitor and it interrupts the, whatever comes into the mic, replaces the guitar sound in the guitar amp. So no matter what I'm doing with effects or not, that's what's coming out of my amp when I hit the interruptulator. So switch one is the microphone comes through. Switch two is in the States is 60 cycle hum and in Europe is 50 cycle hum. Nice. Um, and switch, switch three is a kill switch if nothing is plugged into the guitar's input. And now this one doesn't have it. The new guitar has it, the old ones have it. This one doesn't have the input on it. So here it's just a kill switch. But on the other guitars, there's a, a quarter inch jack as an input. So if I wanted to make a feedback loop, and and trust me, I sometimes do. <laughs> if I wanted to take a, if I wanted to take an output, and don't try this without knowing what you're doing. If I wanted to take an output from the amp and bring it back to the input of the guitar to create a feedback loop, oh. or or put a pedal in that loop, um, in order to gain another kind of feedback. Or take a, uh, an Indian, like I used to do in the late 90s, had an Indian a tabla machine from, from mm -hmm. India yeah. that I could get all these different tabla tals playing. And you could, you could change the tempo and the pitch of it very, very quickly and what was being played. And I would run it through here. So I'd be playing some shit and really boring myself with my guitar playing. So I just set something up on the tabla machine and just randomly hit it in the middle of you know a drum fill nice <laughs> you know? That's... How... You know, so again the idea so, of interruption right? yeah i was listening i was listening to uh uh cloud around mercury um earlier today and that record was 87 87 well uh, yeah it was yeah it was recorded in uh came out in 87 i think we recorded it in 80 the beginning of 86 or something like that yeah so i i'm listening to that record and i'm going i mean there's certainly a lot of playing stuff that I, I have no idea how he did this um but then there is like there's a lot of just really bizarre guitar sounds and things like that that you did on that record that i'm like this like, n nobody else out there had to have been doing that kind of thing at that time, right? Like, you... you no, kind of... I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Not in, definitely, there's some things that people might have been doing, but not in the way, especially the looping thing. Nobody was really doing what I was doing 
with it, which was making sure that I could play it in real time. It was not a Frippertronics thing at yeah. all. Still yeah. isn't. It's, it wasn't intended to be like, quote unquote, soundscapey. It was intended to become like completely integrated with my guitar playing. So that mm. and the double, uh, the, um, the, um, um, the double harmonizer thing that I had going sure, on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and actually writing music for those sounds, that was that my break. That was for me, the breakthrough in that band was writing music with those devices on my own alone in a room and then and then putting it into action by finding the right people to play with, including importantly, including Mark Isham at the time, because I knew that he was into looping and I and I was sure that I could I could actually I'm not going to say I wanted to write specifically for him, but in terms of his looping, I could say something like, you know, uh, why in this section, why don't you just do long tones kind of moving across the microphone? Uh, he probably had already done it in his life, but I was able to say here in an arrangement here, could you do that? I'll do this other loop and, and then we'll play the melodies together. And he had a harmonizer as well. So I could write melodies where we both were using harmon harmonizations on our instruments that were planned and mine were polyphonic, his monophonic. But when we play melodies together, it sounds, it really sounds fucking great. That record could sound a million times better if I could remix it and get some bass and some ass into it uh, uh, because it was yeah. really, it was mixed very thin on the bottom. Yeah, the bass drum is like disappeared. It's Tony like should record. be like, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's, it, it, it didn't deserve that kind of mix. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it want, I know better. But, yeah, and I knew better then, but I didn't have the strength in my voice to go, hey, dude, fucking turn off the low end, turn it off. <laughs> do you? Uh, we had, do we had you? To wait. We had to wait for the producer to fall asleep at the console, and then the engineer would look at me slyly, and I'd go, yeah, turn the bass up. <laughs> and then, you know, invari invariably, Iker would, would wake up and say, it sounds different now. I, I, I think the bass is too much. Is the bass too much? Well, no, it's too much. I think, yeah, and done. <laughs> and, the, and I'll never stop catching shit from Bruford for, and... and to a certain degree, Tony, but he's not like that. But definitely Bill Bruford it was like, man, can you go back and remix that record, please? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was like a, a long run on sentence, wasn't it? No, yeah. we're, we're very much into grammar on this show. We so are, that is yeah. our time. Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think we have to stop. Was that, that, was like, that was like 1,235 words. <laughs> so when... Did you grow up in a musical family, and did did you also like start? Did you start listening to you know like you heard I don't know, you heard who insert guitar player here Jimi Hendrix you know whatever, and went oh you know I want to do that started out as this blues rock guy and then you were like got bored of the guitar and decided there's more you could pull out of it or. Did you like when you got into playing guitar? Was it were you always kind of on this different plane of thought than most of us I, don't? I, no, I, I got I got into it on a on a super fundamental level because I was my, my mom was very musical. My dad, good, really good classical pianist, and as as her she she ended up with arthritis in her hands quite young, so she kind of like stepped off the classical plate, got away from it completely and was playing like sort of cocktail jazz stuff very well. She'd like get arrangements of like, of, you know, like the, you know, I guess Andre Provan, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And she was involved in Broadway. She wrote a couple of off, off Broadway uh, plays and she was involved in the music of those things. So we had a lot of crazy people in the house when she was doing that <laughs> stuff. Music was always there. Music was always there. She was she was uh, absolutely adamant that I learned to play piano first, and I did. And 
wish and I worked hard at it and didn't love it that much. And in school, they started, they had a school band and I had to, she said, you have to have an instrument in the school band. What do you want to do? Okay, I want to play drums, I guess. So I played drums. And one day she, she uh, traded in, they used to have these stamp books at the grocery stores. Um, when you bought a whole, they still do it now. When you bought a whole lot of it, you got these stamps and you had like a catalog, s &H catalog, and they sold, uh, you could trade in your stamps. You couldn't trade them in for money, but you could trade them in for shit that was in this catalog, the s &H stamp catalog. So my mom just thought, I, I, I found out later, she thought, you know, he probably should be a little bit more current than play some guitar because Kids are really like guitar right now. So she got me a little acoustic guitar. I fell in love with it right away. Yeah. She gave me, she got me lessons that were ridiculous that I had to bail out of because the teacher was, she, I, yet she put me immediately into, this was a family thing. She's put me into flamenco lessons with a, a guy who was primary language and the only language he liked speaking was Spanish. And and I wasn't ready for that. So she hooked me up with her, one of her jazz buddies who turned out to be one of the greatest music teachers of my life. Mm -hmm. This uh, uh, unknown Italian dude, school teacher by day, motherfucker jazz player mm -hmm. by night, nice. mostly teaching. And, and we did a lot of chord melody stuff together. I didn't really get to I didn't get to um, thinking about being me until after I was like 16. You know, I wanted to be like Hendrix. Yeah. I wanted to be like McLaughlin when McLaughlin was around. Actually, by the time McLaughlin showed up in, in my life, I wanted to be something like him, but not him. So I was at that stage where I'd copy stuff and then try to, to um, like I did with Hendrix, copy the licks. Yep. And then start replacing, repl play the phrase perfectly, and then start replacing notes. Leave the rhythm alone. Mm -hmm. Start playing different notes, yep. different scales. And I found out about you know harmony and stuff. And they made me go to to Berkeley for for a semester. Uh, my grandmother made a deal with me. To, <laughs> she paid for one semester at Berkeley if. Um, uh, it's pretty much that's not really what happened. My parents made the deal with me. My grandmother left me like 800 bucks, nice. <laughs> 800, 900 bucks. And it was enough to cover mm -hmm. two semesters work in one semester at Berkeley. So I went um, and uh, and hated it. I couldn't I couldn't deal. I just couldn't deal with just, it. Too many jazz bows. Uh, I think we all and, have that in common and, with and, music school. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, it's that thing that happens. It's that thing that happens with new new jazz bows is, uh, especially on the guitar at that time because it was it, it suddenly was like a competitive sport. Yeah, and how many and playing bebop? It, you know, so can you play changes? Yeah, of course I can play changes, but do I want to? No, I don't. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you know? Right. I want, uh, I want to play music. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, or like. I, I always got a kick out of like, you know, like giant steps where it's like, mm -hmm. how fast can we do yeah, it? Yeah, well, and you know, you're also kind of like, everybody and their mother has played giant steps at this point. You yeah. know, it's not even like a feat anymore. No, <laughs> like it's. I, yeah. I, I have a I have a I have a couple of friends who are I I will say this three friends who are incredibly precise, incredibly fast players. I probably have more than three friends. But I'm thinking of three specifically. And when these guys play fast, you kind of sit up and go, that's fucking cool, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Because, because there's something behind it besides just the speed, mm -hmm. um, which, which is not something that people, want, you know, people don't talk about that in music school unless you're like in a composition class, I think. Right, you know? right. Um, why are you writing this? Why do you play? Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you here to be an entertainer? Yeah. Do you want to be Albert King or do you want to be Ryan? You know, right, right. That that stuff doesn't often come up in 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 school very right. much. You yeah. know, 
Yeah. I will say, pro tip for both of you and for all our viewers, if someone calls Giant Steps and you don't want to play it, you go, yeah, there's this really cool arrangement. And you go on YouTube and there's a video where they took uh, Sandstorm, the techno song, and reharmed it to Giant Steps. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have to check that out. It's horrifying. <laughs> but I just go, yeah, this is the arrangement. I like this is what I want to do. Ah, and fantastic. then we don't it's, do it. it it's, I, I've always been like impressed that I think it's really great, but I knew that I didn't want to be in that boat. And that that point in time at Berkeley, you know, I, I was, I really was, I, I was, I maybe made myself an outsider, but I definitely was an outsider. Sure. I really felt a very yeah. alone. Yeah. There were a couple of people I could play with and, uh, and that was it. Uh, one guitar player that I, I, I still know, we're not close anymore, but Jeff Richmond, who teaches in Los Angeles, uh, who turned out to be one of the great kind of post-fusion guys, you know, mm -hmm. fusion, post-fusion guys. Um, yeah, it, it, it's weird being a musician, right? <laughs> I mean, yes. It's, yes. That's kind it's of weird. the ethos of the show. Yeah. Is it's very, yeah, absolutely. It's, I, I think it's weirder to, from in some way, I don't think it's weirder for me, but it's weird for me to realize that I'm I'm going to be seventy. I'm still a musician. It's still the same, same shit. It's, you get like the same shit, different level thing mm -hmm. going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like you know, sometimes sometimes there's money, sometimes there ain't money. Sometimes there's, there's big money, sometimes there's none. You know, at sometimes people love you. Other times people go, man, that guy cannot play a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> there's, uh, there's What's this... with all those effects, man? You know? <laughs> right. Learn how to play. Yeah. Um, there It'll is... sound better if you use less gain, you know? Yeah. There's this, uh, <laughs> th there's this story, and it was like, it was, when I read it, it was just hugely eye-opening, um, you know, because I have never been on this level and will never be on this level. That's the spirit. Um, but um, I read that um, that at one point, McCartney got wind that um, that the Stones got a bigger advance on a record than the Beatles did on a record that they were working on. And McCartney, yeah. McCartney went to Epstein and was like, this is unacceptable. It is unacceptable that the Rolling Stones got a bigger uh, advance than we did, and you know, like, and I, and he he eventually got the money that he wanted. I think the story goes. Oh, but, as a businessman, he was right, right, right. But like the the, <laughs> but like the thing that I thought of is like, man, you got a guy who is in, you know, at that point in time, the biggest band in the world, and he's like bitching about. He still doesn't have enough. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. he's, he's bitching about, you know, how much somebody else got paid and, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, dude, you're in the Beatles. And, you know, it's just like, and when you hear people talk about that stuff where it's like, yeah, any of those weird insecurities and stuff like that that you have on any level, they never go away. Mm -hmm. And when you get up into, you know, when you get up into that pro level, you still got them and yeah. you still got to. Uh, I, I, I'd be fair. I'd be fair to Paul and I would say. You know, at that point in time, even though they knew they had that success, think of how shocking it still was for them. Those guys were living in shock for like five or six years, yeah. not knowing what the fuck hit them. And if I were Paul's manager and I saw that the Stones were getting more dough from the same label, I, I would have said business wise. Yeah, that's that's that's. You, you can do that, but that's not cool because, mm -hmm. you know, we're paying for everything here. Yeah, yeah. We're the, they were the band paying for everything, right? right? Um, it's, so, so I kind of I kind of can get it. And, and, I, I, and, and I think that I also have the experience of knowing people who have been very successful musically when they're very young. And it's very, very different to people who develop a career over 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of my friends who got super successful young really had some fucked up shit happen that I didn't mm -hmm. have. Yeah. You know, I I wanted Very fair point. I wanted yeah. to keep my I wanted to keep my head down, do my thing, get as far as I could doing the things that I love, make sure my family was happy, 
-hmm. and just keep going want to keep the music going that's all i need i wasn't looking for uh, a giant i wasn't looking for a giant dollar bill everybody likes the idea of celebrity until they have it yeah you know yeah. um I mean, right. I don't know. And, and, <laughs> I don't know. I can't empathize. If but anyone I, out there wants to make me and Ryan famous, just to try it. Yeah, we'll, just we'll for report a little back. Bit. Just yeah. it'll mm -hmm. be uh, it'll be an but, experiment. But, but you guys, you you know, the thing is, like you you have it you have it on your level now, wherever you are, whatever that is. Yeah, you're gonna go to NAM and you're gonna meet a lot of couple of people level. that you really, the it, whatever. Yeah, I don't know about that, but. You, it, you're going to meet hate. people and they're going to you're cool and you're going to make new friends and then there's going to be some ass wipes that come up to you and want some shit from you you can't possibly give them you don't <laughs> want to it's like no dude no you, no don't call me um uh, uh, my email address is and you make up uh, and, and you just you, you don't want david it. You don't torn want at at com is my email address yeah yeah that, that, that's exactly what you do yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. I used, I used to have a, I used to have a friend, uh, in college and she was attractive and she would, um, and she would get hit on at the bar. Oh, I see where I thought it was just like, no, I no that. <laughs> yeah. That's just, I immediately just rate everyone just kind of, that's how I start out. Um, no, um, no. So she, she would get, no, she it would, sounded like you were saying it was kind of sounded like you were saying you couldn't go to college, but you had a friend in one. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, <laughs> they only let attractive people yeah. in. So yeah, that's why I couldn't get in. Uh, only pretty people go to college. Uh, no. So Sorry. she, she would get, she would get hit on quite a bit when we were, when we were out. And um, one time I overheard her giving a guy her phone number and the, she goes, yeah, it's, uh, it's 867 53 Zero nine. zero nine and the guy goes oh 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 yeah and we have two area codes in Minneapolis, like st paul has an area code and yeah. minneapolis has an area code and the guy's like is that 612 or 651 and she was like 651 and he was like great and he walked out of there feeling so good mm -hmm. with it and he wrote down the tommy two-tone number yeah and didn't, didn't even process didn't it. even and I asked her if she did that a lot. She's like, all the time. I'm like, has it has any... to be so fun. I'm like, has anybody busted you? And she was like, nope. <laughs> I told him my name was Jenny also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, and the bell did not. No. I have friends who are really, I have friends who are really tall, and they take care of this stuff in very different ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tall, tall, a big guy. Big guy, tall, wide, can really kind of like, you know, just kind of look down and go, what? Uh, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. That's my job. <laughs> That's your job. Yeah. You're tall, but you're not wide. No. <laughs> you, you I'm also too much golden retriever energy to really be yeah. scary. If you need it, if you need it, if you need a, <laughs> co you need a coat rack to get your yeah. back, this guy. Yeah. This I might just you. hug the guy a little too tight and then I'll leave. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add. <laughs> I'm gonna add this question on, um, and and Andre has asked a few different questions. I typically save questions for the last 15 minutes, but which, this is an important one, which we are coming up to now. But this Wait. is a, this is a, an important question, and he even prefaced it with more importantly, is David drinking Uzo? Uzo. Is that Andre C talking? Yes. yes. Andre. He wants to. He he wants to know if you drink an Uzo. Tell him I said it smells like Uzo, but it <laughs> isn't Uzo, and it's not Rocky, not Uzo, and not Rocky. And see what he answers. All right, All right. I guess Andre, it. it's Andre, it's back on you it's up now. To you, I do this gig annually in Chicago. That's across from a Greek restaurant, or like the rehearsal space is across yeah. from a Greek restaurant, and that is my, like. That's your Uzo time? That's my Uzo time. Like, I do it then, so hopefully it stays away from me for the rest of the year. It's not it's not exactly my favorite. Um, but in Chicago, I, between Uzo drink, and Malort, I, I'll take it. There, uh, there, was, there was a bar called Simeon's in Ithaca that I played Sunday and Monday night jazz at for on and off for a couple of years. And I didn't really drink alcohol in those days. 
um, coming from a family with with problems with such things, I just didn't really want to do it. But whenever I played that gig, I felt constrained both to get high and to also drink ouzo. <laughs> 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 and then, and I loved, uh, I, I really loved uh, drinking Rocky, which is the uh, the Turkish version of ouzo. It's very similar. Yeah. So Andre is saying his next guest was Rocky, and now he's stumped. Tell him, st- tell him uh, starts with an A. Starts with an A. Ah. It, is it? Hear the, me. What am I talking about? He's got tell both him. his ears, so it can't be what we're thinking. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And somebody else had guessed what, if that was absent. Um, I didn't. Yeah, it's absent. I've That's never very even, exciting. You have it? No, oh, it's quite absent. nice. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got a nice one here. So, it's going slow. It's going slowly, which is good. good which is probably preferable. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, if you finish that quickly, we might end this. With, we might have to go with, another you, hour. You not, <laughs> yeah, David's going to do the second hour shirtless. Yeah. Um, if David I'm, is willing to go shirtless, I will go shirtless as well. That's that's. The I'm not going shirtless, but I'll go brainless. All right. If we do this at the ice house, there will be a tip Brent jar and a certain dollar amount where we all have to go shirtless. <laughs> It. It's going to be high. Just because... Yeah. Um, Dave, David, I have another just a personal question that I want to um, I want to ask that's not gear related. And by the way, if you guys have any other questions that you want to get in, now is the time to do it. Um, but my question is just in listening to it's hard to wrap your head around kind of everything that you've done because you've done a lot of stuff. Um, but I can't help but get this impression that your biggest inspirations musically are not guitar players. Would I be correct? <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. I, I, I'd say so. But I, I trust me, I love guitar and I yeah. love hearing guitar players play. But I think I, I think I knew I think I knew before I acted on this, I think I knew in my 20s that I was more concerned with music than the instrument itself. Mm -hmm. If I respected the guitar more, I would have practiced much more at the traditional practices. Um, But I, I, I was so trying to follow my ear. And you know, the the fact is, is that, you know, I, I think that 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 some of the some of the biggest personal successes for for me have been just in helping people make music mm-hmm. you know or being a part of something even i even feel that way about my own bands which is kind of strange because i i i kind of choose people that i know i i think we're going to get along and we're going to find something there's going to be some kind of shared language developed between us over a period of years that will make it feel like a band and 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 it will also help all of us find some other place in music and 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 that's that feels pretty consistent to me so but man i love the fucking guitar i mean i haven't played now you can't see this but my the i i it, it, the rotator cuff in my right shoulder got damaged like uh <sighs> badly enough so that a couple of weeks ago i had to i had to first i had to stop mixing and doing anything with the computer for about five days because i couldn't get my right arm to go backwards far enough or upwards the elbow upwards far enough got to keep it close to my body and i realized i haven't picked up the guitar not a regular guitar like electric guitar since whenever uh, i don't know two weeks ago or something like that that's pretty unusual Mm. for me these Mm -hmm. days i usually pick it up every day even if i'm doing something dumbass you know like 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 practicing something really silly i was i was i was trying to work out um some microtonal moves uh the 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 last i was playing guitar was, was was working trying really trying hard to get certain uh microtones one to the other and skipping the the uh the the equal tempered note completely so two notes right next to each other which means in some cases only like 
15 cents away from each other and be able to get from one to the other and back and have that be like part a musical because people do this matt mitchell the great pianist and composer and i were talking about this today we we do this stuff all the time especially guitar players horn mm -hmm. players you're always moving pitches around mm -hmm. more than half of your life is tuning while you're playing even if you're not turning the pegs you're constantly kind of going oh man that chord sounds great but dude that fifth string is like no get it up a little bit higher and when you do your vibrato and you come from all that blues shit that almost all of us come from to some degree um i mean most electric guitar players it's come from that even yeah, when yeah. they don't even when they don't want to yep. you know it's, it's that and and we're, old spanish tradition yeah we were all but, born but of it. but you know, what uh if you're What's a guitar that? if you're a guitar player you were you were born of the blues you know mm -hmm. it all it all started it, there. It, 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 yeah i think it has to be these days with electrics even you even hear it in like the new dudes with the new kinds of um, uh, the new kinds of tapping stuff yeah. uh, guys and girls doing this stuff but there's still all this blue stuff in the music itself and yeah. and yeah i so so i mean that's like a, the, i feel bad about like not being able to really play because I, I that's how i pr end up practicing myself is by playing and i play and i find something i can't do and i see it right away i recognize it and i go okay let's just hang out with that for like 15 20 minutes see how far you can get and then go back to improvising and play and by the way do you really like that amp back there which one the that little tone, thing i think that little... i got a bunch of them the, the the sexy tone thing. Oh, the silk tone one. Sexy yeah, tone. man. You uh, should change the name. Yeah, uh, silk tone is great. Um, I think so. That one right there is the Astro, which was released today. But he has a. That's the one with the, that's the one with the one knob. And yeah. The switch yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So then it has a it has, has a done... has a mids you knob. Do that. Yeah, I, I, I saw that and, and I, I've looked at the amp and I thought that would be really cool if it were even more so if it were a 40 watt amp that well, that that I, you know, he should do that. Maybe we should talk to Charles yeah. about a signature uh, David Torrance Silk Tone right. amp. Possibly foot switchable uh, between the channels. I would like that. I bet you Charles would do it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a non channel guy. Even though I have amps that have channels, right, right. I, I, yeah, I don't have the brain power for it. I went complete retro, like uh, in in that way, pretty long time ago now, 15, yeah. 18 years ago. I just no, it's more than that. Nineteen around nineteen ninety is when I went. Mm. I kind of went, and I did use channel switchers for a bit in there because I thought it was necessary. And then one day I went. You know, I like these amps that have a little less electronics in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know why the uh, both big and little ones they just feel faster to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm I'm hearing a note faster, and the detail of a note, which is where I live, is with the pitch of a note and the attack of it is like I'm. I'm it's present for me mm -hmm. all the time, no matter how much reverb I have on. Yeah, you know, I can still, I still I get feel, that thing, and I feel like with those, with those, yeah, with those, with those class A, you know, single ended amps, you do, you feel closer to mm -hmm. the instrument somehow. I yeah. don't really, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about, but it does, it does, it feels like. I ha I have a yeah I have a trick with my little Fryat Ether amp that is uh, it's illegal or well it wasn't it wasn't designed in to the amp purpose but I found it one day which was the the power amp has a has a, a three position switch sorry two position switch and one switch is negative feedback which is mm -hmm. um, basically the 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 standard position. And then over to the right is a bold switch, which is less negative feedback. Mm -hmm. And one day I was messing around with the switch and, and, and I, all of a sudden the amp got like, I don't know, five DB louder and way more open and like huge sounding. And I went, and I went, wait, 
can I, and I, so I basically have set it up so that I can put the switch in the middle and I've never used the amp in any mm. other way. It's, it's a really simple um, amplifier, the, the, the ether. It's really very, very simple. It's, there's as little as possible in nice. there. And, and it's fantastic. It's just like, it sounds huge. I can do these doom shit like in Saudade Music Collective with that amp with a with a one by 12 cabinet and just the normal mics and the right you know crank the amp up to like two and a half two thirty three o'clock really get it cooking and just it sounds tr huge way bigger than any old little champ ev uh, or uh, or deluxe ever just uh, what the fuck? Yeah, and, and 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 it's so simple. The damn thing weighs the amp. The power amp is separated from the cabinet. Uh, the 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 power amp weighs something like 16, 17 pounds. The mm -hmm. cabinet with the preamp in it weighs twenty pounds or twenty two pounds. Mm -hmm. It's like, and and it sounds like, oh man, I played it through. Uh, <laughs> I played it through. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Dr. No from Bad Brains, Gary Miller. Yeah. You know, you know that band, Bad Brains? Mm -hmm. So I yeah. played it through Gary's, through Doc's, uh, uh, in, in the studio on, on a couple of tracks. I played that amp through the, the, that rectifier, Mesa rectifier four by 12. That was part yeah. of Bad Brains yeah. sound. And it was like. Holy shit! <laughs> Little yeah. twenty-five watt amp sounded like, yeah, it it, it was it's really I, I don't know. Amplifiers are a real big thing in my life. God, well, I'm, I'm good thing huge. Good thing your buddies with the guys at Fred, that so helps. you know that that helps out a lot. Yeah, that's 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 been you know that's been an, a, an incredibly great friendship and also fruitful in terms of the amplifiers that yeah. I'm playing because everything, everything since the very beginning, I started, like, I, I always want, he, he designed an amp and it sounded amazing to me. And I'd go, I love that, but could we do this? Yeah. You guys, you guys <laughs> probably, go, you guys sound like you have a great codependent relationship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good it's good it's it's you know nobody nobody's getting hurt yeah i want to i want to shift uh we're just gonna do one question here and i'm not sure i understand it um but he's asked it twice now um and the question is what is your fuzz style and and just to piggyback on that a little bit i would like to hear the fuzz pedals that you are enjoying right now like the 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 fuzz pedals that you are are finding a lot of enjoyment with. Um, where do where do you want me to start, Ryan? I'll I don't wherever you like. wherever you want, whatever stream of consciousness I, I, happens there. Cur cur currently, the the hot fuzz pedals that are getting used right now are are two custom made things from Collector Effector, Patrick Brown. Cool. Um, yeah. One is a one is a a kind of like jacked up zonk machine cool. that's basically a tone bender mark one but with a lot of a, a lot of grease along with the crackle yeah and the other one is this thing a, another mark one tone bender called um uh, i i uh, what's it called i think he calls it a uh, something machine song machine that's what he calls it okay. and that's getting a lot of play um, the fjord fuzzes from Norway are yeah. killing it here right now. Yeah. I've always got, um, especially uh, especially in my case, the Odin. Mm -hmm. The have, have have you tested those out? Those guys? I haven't. I haven't. But you sent me some clips where I've been like, "What is that?" And you're like, "It's the Odin." Man, the Odin is is it, it, it's it's beautiful and and it's different. Almost everything that Daniel is making is it's just a little off everybody's reservation somehow. Yeah. And it does things that it, it gets into like in between corners of fuzz that a lot of fuzzes don't do. He reminds me a lot of, of 
when John Lyons from Basic Audio decides he's going to take a design and then kind of change it the way he likes it, mm -hmm. Daniel's on a similar idea, except he's using way different technologies to do this mm -hmm. stuff. And and there's always there's always a Basic Audio fuzz or two around regularly. There's um, I got my old this thing. Here it comes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I got this back. This vintage thing oh, for my youngest I son. Really Here neither. Pull that a little it further a, away. It's a, it's a wolf tone chaos pedal. Oh. You got it back. That implies that it was gone. It was that it was yeah, it was at Cody's house. Oh, okay. Um and he said, you know, you know, I have this one and I I don't really use it. And um it's something else that's I'm just looking at the pile here. <laughs> I believe it's a pile. I believe it is a large pile uh -huh. of fuzz. Fuzz goodness. Um El Eldritch Blast, the thing. Oh the, yeah, the, uh, from Mask Audio. And uh, that, uh I'll, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a I'll send you a a, a ninety nine percent finished track from the new record. Yeah, where where I'm only playing the Eldritch Blast, which is E A E and Mask yeah. together. I have yeah. I have almost everything that Alec has made. Alec's great. The, all the Mask stuff. Yeah, he's fantastic. And and you know you 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 you're one of the few people who has you and. Um, and Ian Pritchard, um, who has an, another name, Collector Emitter. I can't remember what his. That's it. Yeah. 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 You two guys, when you do demos, and I haven't seen something, then I tend to kind of go, "Oh wait, 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 wait." I, I'm not patient with the internet at all, so <laughs> I, I, I'm just not. Uh, if 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 YouTube is doing something and it's on for like 15 or 16 seconds it's got to be really really and get i have to be engaged or yeah. else i'm off i just I, I i i go away yeah i disappear i think man i should be fucking working what am i doing you know like i can't i i, I can write faster than i can understand things that people say <laughs> on the internet for some reason but you you have created some problems for me oh. well, you showed up with that wolf that wolf guitar and the bunting one and i went wait a second what's yeah. that guy doing that neck I'm joint sorry. is not in the right place i'm sorry sorry about that no it's okay, <laughs> okay. I, 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 um, it's 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 december and there is no there is no equipment budget you're right uh, right december. But, but december is right off month though it's what? It's write-off right month. Yeah. You know, that's where you get that's where you get oh, all oh, your yeah. write-offs taken care of. Yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm I, I'm together with my write-offs. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so I I have to ask just because she is one of my nearest and dearest friends, mm -hmm. and um I think it's only fair, and I can hear the tone in her voice when she asks this. Uh, Anne Silikowski wants to know what your favorite not, not a fuzz a pedal fuzz. is right now. <laughs> Whoa, that could be something really simple. I mean, it, it really should be the, the that um, the the I can't pronounce yeah, the name. Like the, this I'm word. gonna turn this off. <laughs> this tuner. Yeah, my no, tuner. My tuner no, really doesn't. It, it's a copy of a Dynacomp and a Tron <laughs> put together in a mini in a mini pedal. And it's got a germanium diode in it. One, what's one it called? Germanium diode, and it's very special. No, kidding. Oh, okay. Um, I, the glue glue lupe looper mm. is really. Uh, it's been fucking great for writing. Unbelievably cool. great for for actually exploring new writing with new things I can do. That things that. Honestly, uh, it's one of those pedals where it's doing things that I could do on the computer 25 years ago, but it's organized in a way that I'm not only doing that, I can do it in real time while I have an instrument in my hands. That's like super key to me. And that's ended up 
it ended up making me finish, start and finish a whole new record. Cool. I mean, that's everything, great. That's everything great when based it, around. That's that's great when a piece of equipment can do that. Um, and it, it so, is it's super cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. do uh, I'm gonna do one last question because I think it's probably a yes or no answer. And we and are... mood mood I can't forget oh, mood. Yeah. Though, yeah. Right? yeah. I, you can't forget mood. Mood is like it's like your it's like your little pal who's like it's like a it's like a psychotic little puppy that mm-hmm. loves you to death. Yeah. And but still chat <laughs> you, you they every should ten have, minutes. They should have put that in the yeah. ad copy. Um. So the question is, uh, any chance you would release concert downloads for purchase? Uh, this person would love the cloud about Mercury Tour. By the way, I said cloud around Mercury Tour earlier, yeah, and somebody anything, got me but... on that one. Um, but um, I'd love to the cloud about Mercury Tour, the Presence Tour, solo. Yeah, have you ever given any thought to putting that stuff up? Do you have any? We 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 actually we actually have uh, released. Uh, Tim and I released two presence records that are on Screw Gun Records Bandcamp um, in the last year. I think we did two. Um, uh, we might have done one Son of Goldfinger live, yes, and one Presence live. Okay. Um, that and, and I am I'm in the process of switching over from being on a record company to not being on a record company mm. which is brand new for me and it takes it's taking a lot of time to figure it out yeah but I'll, i'm probably going to do something like that because uh i'm going to have a band camp a page of my own soon cool. when i release this record and even if it comes out on a label as well there will be the band camp page and i plan on putting stuff on there in the same way that i do it on instagram except cool. it'll be stuff that i'm also selling cool. so so uh, I, I don't want to let go of the, the I, I really love this whole SoundCloud started for me with SoundCloud and some other shit before it. And now it, it's moved to Instagram where the interaction with people for me is much better. Um, mm-hmm. And well, yeah, so man, yep. you, you got uh, you got people asking for all kinds of stuff. Uh, here, you know, EMI music to be. Yeah, re-released. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and, I promise, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna sell it before I die. Yeah, I am. So I, 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 I think, gonna... I think once you do that, I think you will have lots of buyers uh, lining up to get that stuff. So that sounds great. And you know what? Hey, I knew this was gonna, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew this that was we gonna, gonna happen. Go I knew we were gonna go over oh, time. Yeah, and then I knew like we were gonna be fighting against the clock, and we get to a point where I'd be like, man. Um, I could do another couple hours. Uh, mm-hmm. And would you uh, would you want to come back again at some point and do this again? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We got it. We got to do live from Ice House uh, now. And yeah, we you to. could. We'll do. We'll do live with sandwiches oh, at man. Ice House. Wouldn't yeah. that be fun? It would be super fun. I would be talking with my mouth full the entire time. <laughs> Yo, you'd be, be awesome. wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big old plexiglass thing on the <laughs> yeah, stage now. Yeah. I can spit all I want. Yeah. Um, right. David, I, I appreciate your time. I yeah. know you are uh, you are an extremely busy individual, and I have so many more questions that I would like to ask you just selfishly get the answers to. Um, but um, uh, Well, you can still do that. I course, can still do but, that. Uh, I can, can still do that. Of course. Um, but, um, yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we will we shall have to have you have you back in 2022 and uh and I think uh I think that'll be great. Mhm. So And uh, send me send me a, I'll, I'll send you that that track with the with the uh, uh where I think the Eldritch Blast really is just it, it, the, the track would not I wouldn't have that voice at all if it weren't mm. for the way it was interacting with the amp. It's it's really cool, I think. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Awesome. It's missing a vocal though. There's a vocalist I, who needs to be on it, and that's who... all. We'll do. No, it. no, it's yeah. fine. We'll do it. <laughs> all right, David. Thank you so much, and I will talk to you very soon, Thanks, sir. Dudes. It's so all great right. to meet you. Yep. I could have done that for another two oh hours. Oh my gosh! It was just like it was just like it was like. Can I absorb? Like, 
the essence of David yeah. Torn. Uh, David Torn is one of those musicians, and Frizzell came up in the in the comments a few times. And the thing that that Torn and Frizzell have in common with me is like they they think on a plane that I can't get to. Yeah. And so when I listen to their music, I am it's not an educational thing at all. Like I, you know, and so I, you know, I'm not like trying to figure out how yeah. the, a lick was played what was or that? because it's like, I can't even get into the headspace mm. where, um, where, uh, you would have to be to make those sounds. Right. Yeah. And so, so David ends up being, you know, David and Frizzell end up being the musicians that I listen to and just allow myself to enjoy it. Mm hmm. And um, so it's just absolutely a pleasure to to talk to that guy, and he is um, he has been so approachable, um, and he's just so laid back, and you know, like he would never tell you all the amazing stuff that he's done, uh, you know. But he's going to yeah. on the next. And, in yeah, the I mean, we didn't even we didn't even talk about like Bowie or who he's played with, film scoring yeah, or nothing. any of that stuff, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Like it, it was so there's a there's a lot to get to there, and. Um, and I, I am definitely going to try to get him back. Um, so, and this is our last one of the year. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't laid out our first uh, January. I have our second January. But I haven't laid out our first January yet. Um, and actually, our second January is going to be Charles from Silk Tone Amps that we were talking about earlier there. Um, and um, it's just been a, it's been an incredible year. I think everybody who's stuck around and watched this um, and encouraged us to keep going. Yeah. And you all have terrible taste. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, the guests have been just extraordinary. Again, Chris Benson's goat. Great. <laughs> Chris Benson's other goat. Now David Torn. Di Chris Benson's children. David Torn's absent. Yep. Um, <sighs> So, um, yeah, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We do gear demos here as well if you're into gear. Yep. Uh, we got T-shirts. You can buy a T-shirt. Got T-shirts. Yeah, man. Um, but I thank you uh, all for a really great year, and I look forward to seeing you again in, uh, in 2022. Let's do it. All right. All right. Thanks, guys.